What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Martian and Ozzy podcast. This week, we're going to be breaking down the UFC Apex card headline by Tai Tuivasa versus Marcin Tibura. 13 fights going down in Vegas at the Apex this weekend. Joined by my co-host, as always, Ozzy. How are we doing this week, my man? What's up? Uh, fresh off a uh, uh, killer um, pay-per-view, right? I think the card that uh, we were most anticipating for the year. So, you know, cool week. Uh, a lot of uh, discourse you know, that came from it, you know, some, some awesome moments. So yeah, I, I enjoyed that last week warming up up here in the, uh, in the Northeast and we got a little apex, uh, apex card here on deck. So, uh, here we are. Yes, definitely not uh, a ton to talk about this week, but you know, last week was a, a great event top to bottom main card delivered great fights. Uh, Dustin Poirier was the highlight for me. But uh, also, you know, Jack Della, big comeback KO, Song and Jan had a really good fight. O'Malley yeah. styled on Vera. Uh, so it was a lot of good stuff. Yeah, they, um, I mean, you know, the fight card overall, I, I thought deliver. I thought, I thought a few few fights that were boring, came a little bit predictable early on. But I, unfortunately, was on the, the bad end of three fights in a row where it was kind of, your the bet was looking great, like between Shalton, uh, Song Yadong, and Gilbert Burns. So, and you she- know. And the Chuk one, I was like, ah, that like when mean. I thought about it, when I thought about it again, like think about it, like we were investing in Chuk when we could have just been taking Dustin Poirier at just like a better number as well. Um, mm-hmm. And the Chuk fight kind of went as we really thought it would go overall. Chuk just couldn't really land as many strikes as I thought she would be able to. And Macy Barber kind of brought her, her, her um, you know, typical uh, game in there. But, yeah, it was a, a little bit of a losing week for me on the track side of things, but did pretty well between live bets. And that O'Malley uh, decision line and goes the distance and the, the over um, got to basically pick him late. And I kind of just plowed into that and, and you know, kind of played that pretty hard as well. And I had Cheeto, no scorecards. So uh, between that and the MVP fight going the dis- distance and, and Dustin Poirier adding late, I, I had a pretty good event. But, uh, yeah, a few losers in there that I would do again. And uh, I think if I keep getting on the right side on like that, especially in the plus money side, it's going to pay off for sure. Yeah, it was a losing week for me. I think I did be- uh, very poorly in the live bets for a rare change. Um but I did win the big head-to-head with you. I had my man, the American, Curtis Razor Blades. Crazy. And, uh, you know, Black History Month was over right before that event started. But that did not stop Curtis Blades. Moved to 7-0 and on pay-per-views, too. So Big, to big money fighter. Good to see big Kurt fight. get back on track there. But that's enough about last week. We got 13 fights this week. We're starting things off hot in the main event. Two guys coming off of consecutive losses here. Ty Tuivasa. Coming off of three losses in a row, getting finished in all three. Marching to Burr coming off, getting knocked out in 60 seconds by Tom Aspinall. Really great fight here. Odds for this one have a near pick em on bet online. Tie minus 117, to Burr minus 103. Um, not really a groundbreaking take for me in this one, uh, but I just think that I'm going to be waiting to live bet to Burr. I think the most likely way he loses is obviously in the first round. And he typically just takes a beating before surviving and then coming back on his opponents like the Greg Hardy, like Walt Harris, like a lot of guys, Romanov. A lot of his recent wins have been he loses the first round, his opponent slows down, and then he capitalizes late. So there's no need, in my opinion, to take Tabura before the fight. And we can just wait for Ty to have his best moment. Maybe Ty even knocks him out in the first round and we can just avoid a loss here. So uh, I imagine that if it gets out of round one, it should be pretty much all Tabura from there, getting a, a finish on the ground at some point in the second or third. But, you know, low level fight and I'm um, waiting to live bet this one. So any thoughts from you here? Yeah, I, I would argue definitely not a low level fight because Martin Tybora, one of the most well rounded uh, heavyweights in the game. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, I like Mar- Martin. I think in like kind of the post COVID uh, stretch, he kind of like rattled off like five or six wins where I, he was plus money in a few of them, and I definitely uh, supported him uh, a, a, a fair bit. But you kind of know what's wrong with him or like his um, faults as a fighter. Not a, not the best chin. Sometimes kind of um, 
throw strikes a little, a little, a little bit of a low pace and kind of can be content with just kind of scraping by. But overall, he is the better like martial artist, I would say. Better kicks, uh, you know, can close the distance well, uh, and uh, has the ground game and, and a little bit of wrestling. Um, but you know, I do think he could potentially get caught by a few punches here by Ty. Ty uh, throws a lot of very good leg kicks as well. Martim is nimble, but you saw in the Tom Aspinall fight, and usually his fault is that kind of like the speed either of guys, um, of guys like with Aspinall. Like I thought he would compete honestly on the feet, but Aspinall is just way too quick. So I mean, I, I kind of just I lean to just if I'm thinking about the fight that more times than not Martim Tabora wins, but you know, I, like the live bet angle is very good, especially if kind of you're able to commit maybe after a few good strikes by uh, by Tuivasa because, you know, Tuivasa gets tired. Um, he's kind of got his one path to victory and uh, Tybora at all times will be able to win and should be able to win down the stretch because he has been into the later rounds. And uh, did the did the Verdun fight go five rounds or it, yep. it went a little bit? Like, it went all five. Yeah. So. Um, you know, he, he, he's really good. I like Tybora, so I, I'm, I'm probably, gonna, I might bet him pre, pre-fight, <laughs> but he's going to be my pick. I, I, I just can't pick Tech 2 though, so. Yeah, and 9-3 uh, and three in decisions, uh, losses to Volkov, Verdum, and Tim Big Dick Johnson way back in the day. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, the longer it goes, it favors Tabura, and, you know, Tabura would be my pick to win the fight, so I wouldn't totally, you know, knock anyone for taking him before the fight if you're unable to live bet. Uh, enough about that one going on to the co-main event good fight here in the welterweight division two young up and coming well not young but two up and coming guys who have been doing well lately brian battle taking on Ange lusa odds for this one have battle getting a lot of action all week minus 183 lusa plus 158 you're turning to start this one off yeah i think this is an interesting welterweight fight for me um i think that the guys down south in the kill cliff camp uh like Ange lusa you know Ange lusa um, is around for a lot of these guys' fight camps and, you know, is, uh, has been down there for a while. Uh, he fought Jack Della, uh, you know, a few years back, kind of took that L. But overall, he's been developing, I feel. And same thing with Brian Battle. The only thing w- for me is that Brian, I feel, for him to win this fight in reality, like his best chance, I think, is implementing some kind of grappling. And I'm not sure if he's going to do it. And I actually do really like Angelus's game on the feet, like his his stand up. Uh, I feel like the Munar Lazaz fight maybe just a little bit of a bad matchup. He was a, maybe a little bit of an off night, um, but I think that on the feet, I think he's just a lot sharper than Brian Battle. And I think that uh, Brian sometimes gets by because of his chin and before durability and maybe being a little bit quicker um, and more. Uh, have more skills than some of the middleweights, but at welterweight, I think it's a little bit of a different game. Um, and I like, I, you know, I liked him earlier, like the plus 140 number for Ange Lusa, so 155. I feel like I'm getting a really good deal, and uh, that's going to be one of my main bets uh, for this week. And, uh, yeah, but just keeping it to the money line, because I think he could win knockout or by, or uh, decision as well. Yep, I'm in agreement there. Um, Ange Lusa money line for me this week. I do think decision is probably the most likely, but I mean, Ange Lusa has some pop in his hands, and I think that uh, Battle kind of likes to trade on the feet these days, and that could get him caught here. So the line on Lusa KO is pretty big, uh, but I feel like he t- he's most comfortable mixing in takedowns and you know taking the fight to the floor. Um, he hasn't even finished a fight since 2016. His past, you know, I think seven or eight fights have all went to the decision. Um, so that definitely seems the most likely to me if this fight goes the decision. Um, and I just think that Lusa has a little more firepower. I mean, I think this is going to come down to you know who's hustling more in battle. Does have a good gas tank and a good work rate, but he's ca- he can be taken down. I don't think his defense is very good on the feet. And I think uh, Lusa is the better athlete of the two man so i just don't see why this money continues to pour in on battle here i liked lusa early in the week at his you know plus 130 price so i'm going to be adding some more to my lusa position here probably rounding off like one and a half units on lusa here and he is my pick to win a decision and just one more note about that fight in terms of you know always just discussing live bets i feel that 
the fighter more likely to start off well and the fade late is Lusa. So like if you have Lusa before the fight and he's doing well, but he's losing some steam, then there's going to be, I think, a chance to, you know, hedge off with some on battle plus money live um, if you're watching these fights live. So we're moving on to the light heavyweight division, Kennedy and Zetchiku, Ovin St. Pru. Odds for this one having Zetchiku all the way to minus 700 OSP plus 500. So ton of action coming in on the already big favorite in Zetchiku with the parlays just piling on for in Zetchiku. I think it's gotten a little out of hand, but OSP is coming off a long layoff, coming off of a, a steroid suspension, um, you know, coming off of just a 60 second knockout against Felipe Linz, a guy who's not really known for finishing people uh, lately in the UFC, too. So just all bad signs from OSP. Uh, but in Zetchiku, man, is a, a, a goofy ass fighter, and there's no way you could bet anything related to Nzechiku here is money line, his ITD line, they're all out of whack. The only thing maybe I could see is like his uh his late submission line potentially. Uh because the sub is at, you know, plus a thousand on some books and he has submission wins. Just over Devin Clark recently was a submission win. So, you know, plus 1,000 for the sub versus KO at minus 250. I, I don't see, uh, I see some value on the sub for Nzechiku here. I'm wondering if you're thinking the same here, Ozzy. Um, yeah, I, I honestly didn't give this fight uh, a ton of thought in terms of, I mean, wh wh what was the number that you said again that, uh, that it's 1, at? Okay, yeah. I mean, I thought price is pretty good just because. Um, we, I, I think OSP is the biggest fault in his game often was, uh, his cardio, um, him coming in fat with, the, you know, a, a dumb truck and, uh, and, you know, he kind of, when he got clipped by what's his name, uh, Jamal Hill, I think he kind of like started kind of, you know, sticking his neck out, kind of like kind of covering up a little bit. Uh, and you could see this guy jumping on his neck for sure. Um, I don't really have confidence in OSP I, to even show up here too much. Um, you know, could he catch uh, Kennedy with a big shot? Yeah, he could even catch Kennedy with a, you know, maybe like a Von Flute, right? Because maybe, maybe something like this happens. So you're saying like he goes for a guillotine, my boy takes him down, and OSP locks up the Von Flute, right? It could happen, dude. You 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 can't say never. But um, it's a total pass fight for me, honestly. Like I have no investment on it, and I don't foresee myself even being interested in live. Um, two very strange fighters, you know. OSP's made me a lot of money, but. You know, I think I tapped all the water from that well. Actually, uh, some books have this fight removed. There's been some speculation that it might be canceled. I, I just checked DraftKings and it's and it's gone from there. Uh, I, I did make a bet though on FanDuel. I think it's it's round one KO plus twenty five hundred for OSB. I think if he comes out uh, chucking, that's his best chance to win. And you know, he uh, and Zetchiku did just get knocked out by Jacoby in the first round too. So. Stranger things have happened at these big weight classes. We're moving on to a fun fight in the featherweight division. Christian Rodriguez moving up to 145 here, taking on Isaac Dolgarian. Odds for this one have Dolgarian as the favorite, getting steam this week, minus 190. Rodriguez plus 165. Your turn to start this one off. What do you think of all this line movement on Dolgarian this week? Man, interesting fight overall. Um, I When I kind of was first thinking about it, you know, I... I uh, Actually, that on Cameron Simon in the last fight that C Rod had, I felt that with the weight advantage, that was definitely to my detri to the detriment of Cameron. And a lot of the positions there, I just felt that uh, Christian won because he was bigger, just flat out. Like a lot of the some of the wrestling transitions and stuff like that. Um, I felt that he his technique wasn't great, and I thought that if someone was you know his uh, his same level big or bigger, he would have a really big issue. And they gave him some someone who is bigger and is uh, at a higher level. So I think he's gonna struggle here in the grappling department. I do think I do foresee Isaac getting takedowns. Um, so I did take a small bit. And a money line price at in the 145 area, minus 145. And I also like him this him by decision. So I, he could finish, Christian. I could see like maybe like a grappling pace, wearing him out, hitting maybe a big ground and pound strike. But I, I project that it's a, more of a decision line or a fight because of Christian being able to counter grapple. I feel a little bit better than this Marshall. Um, and then maybe being able to keep, stay, keep a range a little bit earlier in rounds with his uh, jumping kicks and being a little bit faster at the 145 weight class. But I do like Isaac to win this fight. My fellow uh, future fight or current fight members, uh, fight numbers, uh, 
uh, you know, coworker, whatever. Uh, uh, Pepe uh, also, I think he's all over Isaac as well. So a lot of sharp guys on the Isaac side. I think some tout money came in on him in like the minus 150 or 60 range. So uh, I think he's the side, but it should be an interesting fight. Um, yeah, uh, we were both severely dead wrong about Dolgarian's last fight. Uh, yeah, getting a marshal there. We it's kind of. Re- I think it's kind of refreshing to be dead wrong sometimes. I don't know about you, um, but Dolgarian has um, nine fights or ten fights in his career, amateur pro. Never been out of the first round. So this guy's clearly a menace early on. I don't think he's going to have bad cardio. I don't think he seems like a guy who's just going to totally, you know, gas, fall off a cliff after the first round. But you do have to wonder about that. The fact that he's never even seen the second round uh, in an MMA fight and his opponents are getting progressively better. And, you know, with the way he was fighting versus Marshall, I mean, he was throwing a ton of strikes. He was using a lot of energy. So his style could be the type of style where he might slow down if this gets out of the first round. And I think it will because Rodriguez is a tough guy to finish. I think especially on the ground, we've seen it versus JSP before he was undersized short notice against a big fighter in JSP. And he survived on the ground pretty well there, survived some submission attempts, ground to pound, didn't have any quit in him. But he was also going for the guillotines a lot in that fight. And even you saw Ro- uh, Rosas Jr. when he got to the back and was in like that back clinch position, he was controlling Rodriguez there. So Rodriguez does seem like the type of guy who is susceptible to going to being out grappled. Even Josh Weems took him down once or twice early on easily. Um, and I just think he's the, he relies too much on those front chokes and he's going to get taken down here. So. I think Rodriguez will be out to an early deficit and he will be losing and you will be have to have a chance to get in on a better live race on him um, rather than taking him before the fight, especially with what I was saying about Dolgarian never making it out of the first round. So I think it'll be all Dolgarian here until maybe uh, we see his cardio tested. I'm interested to see that, but um, you know, no bets on this one for, for me, but I, I do think the way you played a Dolgarian decision is good, you know, way to do it because um, you're getting a, a better price on it because because he's never been to that decision, but that does seem like the most likely outcome. Dolgarian uh, wrestling his way to a decision here. And the next fight is a rematch in the women's Bantamweight division. Pandy Kianzad, Macy Chasson. Chasson minus 220, Kianzad plus 185. They fought for the first time back on the Ultimate Fighter finale back in 2018, I believe it was. Yep. Um, and the odds for that fight were near Pickham closing. And Macy won that fight pretty, pretty easily, man. I mean, she was really leveraging her size in that fight. That fight was at 45. This one is at 35. And I think, you know, Chiasan was just really good back then. Like she, she was uh, undefeated as a pro at the time. She just beat Larissa Pacheco on the ultimate fighter. And I think she was just fighting with a lot of confidence that she doesn't really have anymore. And she was, you know, bullying her way into the clinch and getting takedowns and just using her size on, on Kianzad. I think she's looked worse over the years, but she's also fighting much, much better opponents. But just rewatching that fight, man, I just think Panny looks so helpless in the wrestling positions that I, I can't go and take her again here, especially with what we just saw for Panny versus Vieira. I mean, Vieira is a good women's fighter and grappler, but man, Panny just in terms of the wrestling, man, she looks pretty helpless. I don't think she really knows what she's doing. A lot of the times she does a really bad job once put on bottom. I just don't think her, her body type or her fighting style is suited towards like scrambling and to escaping grappling positions here. So if Chiasen goes back to that wrestling and the clinching that won of the first fight, I think she has potential to win this fight again in similar fashion. And considering Chiasen did win the last fight by sub, I think the fact that her sub line is plus 700 on some books is worth a bet. Um, but the one thing I have to say is rematches in MMA almost always go the opposite way. So Chiasen finished her the first time, just like last week, Marion Moreau's finished Calderwood the first time. And then what happened? The fight completely flipped. And that means that Panny is probably going to win the decision here. Um, but my bet would be on the fight would be Chaston sub at seven to one. Um, I got Panny here. And it's one of my other kind of money line bets uh, for this week. And I mean, I kind of understand what you're saying, but none of that really matters. Uh, <laughs> Pan, I mean, Macy hasn't fought at 135 since. I don't know. It's been like four fights, dude. It's been a long time. She's getting older, and uh, she just looks diminished. And she's the type to, 
you know, going to fight week. Like a bunch of times, she's going into fight week and asking, "Oh, we need to move the fight to, you know, some catch weight to accommodate her and stuff like that." So I don't think one. I don't think this is gonna happen this week. I think if that happens, I think Penny's gonna turn down the fight. Um, that's first. Secondly, um, even if they don't do do it, I just think this girl is gonna not. She's not gonna be able to put a three round. I think pace Penny. So at plus one ninety, I got Penny. She's gonna touch her to the. But this girl got knocked out by a liver kick from bottom, dude. What happens when Penny starts lighting up that you know the, the, that uh, body with uh, with punches? Penny, I, don't, Penny I, don't knock, I don't know. If it's, I don't know, if it's, no, bro. It's like it's like it's like two thousand or something. Let's go, Penny knockout. Penny by knockout. Penny, Penny round three. Mm, Penny round I don't know three. About that, bro. Penny round three, brother. She hasn't knocked the opponent out in a decade. Perfect. You do. <laughs> um, you do. I had some point I wanted to. Oh yeah. Um, Penny that knockout is, is about way the better than what. What? That is a good point about the weight. She hasn't made uh, 135 since uh, three years ago, but she she did have a stretch where she made 135 five times in a row and did go four and one in those fights. So, okay, what's that I think say that, about today? Or I, on think Saturday? That, I think she'll, I think she'll make it, but it definitely is a bit of a question mark. And what about her getting knocked out by a liver kick to the body? That was weak. That was weak. But, Dude, Kat, um, I, Catlin was a smaller fit. Fa- Why was Catlin a smaller favorite than Well, that than line was wrong. Macy. Than Macy. Okay, but I mean, me plus 190, do it is unreasonable. Would you bet Macy minus 190? No, I would not bet a woman at minus 190. Okay. Ooh, yeah, I get, mean, on the, listen, get on money, the winning money side, brother. Side, money line side, yeah. Last I, week, I, did, I did. week, what I did we say? We, I said, hey, if you take Caitlin and Joanne, we said I said at the end of the podcast, what happened? Joanne won. Boom. Well, you there's three. Your there's three women's fights. Double your week, money. So we'll, we'll have to. We'll have to see what uh what we do this week. Uh, okay, that's enough about that one though. Last fight on the main card. First fight on the main card. Middleweight division, premier division. Gerald Mearshart, GM three taking on Brian Barberina. Odds for this one have Mearshart minus two thirty eight, Barberina plus two oh three. Your turn to start this one off. Oh, I hate this fight. Um. The more I think about it, the more I want to just fade GM3. Am I going to feel dumb when he's in top mount on freaking Barbarina and Barbarina's freaking throwing hammer fist punches from his back um, <laughs> and, and Gerald armbars him like it's UFC 1? Yes, I'm going to feel dumb. But I feel like GM3 has chance sometimes. I really don't, don't want to fade GM3. Like I don't like rooting against him. So I'm, I'm probably not even going to do it. But I would have to take... Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Barbarina or Pass. I just feel maybe he could, you know, Gerald uh, shoots, you know, bad takedowns sometimes. And Barbarina, he's scrappy, dude. And if you're not physically imposed, like, I feel like Mur- Mur- uh, Murdov, Martian was like physically imposing. So it kind of was a little bit tough for him to c- kind of build back up and get up. But Gerald's not really like that. Gerald's more of like a slick grappler. He's going to try to like get around them and fucking take his back and then get a front headlock and all this shit. Um, so I don't know how effective it's going to be. So I definitely don't want to be a part of taking him at chalk. All right. Pop quiz, Ozzy in GM three's past 15 fights. How many mm-hmm. has he been the favorite in? Ooh, uh, 15 out of last 15. I'm going to yep. say, uh, four, one, <laughs> Um, that that is according to <laughs> topology. It might not have the exact closing line, right? But he what yeah, like someone like oh, that. Okay. Dustin Stolfus was the <laughs> that the fight where he, he was, was he was minus two hundred. He was like this price. He was minus two fifty, and I'm almost positive yeah. that uh, that I was one mean... one heading into the oh, third yeah. round. It and, was... and and Mearshart was losing the third round, and then got yes. uh, got a. I think it was a rear naked, but oh, rear like, naked, rear. it just goes to show that this guy, yeah, yeah was uh, no, he, Dustin Stolfitz was up 2 0 on one card and then it was 1 1 on the other two. So that it was a do or die in round three for Mearshart and he pulled it out <laughs> against Stolfitz, who stinks. And listen, Barbarina at 185 this late in his career, it does stink, but GM3 at 70% is never ever a good bet. It's not, I mean. So it has to be battle, uh, Barbarina or pass. And I think you can't be that wrong, man. I think if it stays on the feet, Barbarina is going to be throwing out a lot of volume, pumping out volume. His cardio is fine. He's tough. He's, you know, Mearshart isn't going to really hurt him on the feet, I imagine. So Mearshart's going to have to wrestle and he's going to have to, you know, likely submit. Um, 
and that that brings me to the next point is the goes to distance here is heavily heavily predicated on gm3 sub and that really is the only likely finish in this fight for me so i think probably the itd and under is getting overvalued gm3 sub at even money is getting overvalued holy shit i mean I know he got subbed by RDA and Burns, but guys, I, I hate to break it to you that GM3 is a little bit different of a grappler than those two guys. So uh, I think Barbarina is uh, going to be have to be worth the bet here, unfortunately. That's going to bring us to the prelims. Mike Davis and the Tan Levy odds for this one have Davis minus 500, Levy plus 375, ton of steam on Davis. It's probably accurate. Natan Levy is just kind of a, a very harmless fighter, right? This guy doesn't land powerful strikes at all. He takes guys down and he he lets them up right away. His top game sucks. This guy just doesn't like he doesn't finish anybody. He doesn't hurt anybody. He he just doesn't like he's never mean in there, right? So, I think that he's no Mark, Bill Algio. No, not at all. He's also coming off a pretty damn long layoff. Didn't fight all 2023 and I just think Mike Davis is a much better opponent than any guy he's fought so far. And Mike Davis is going to be able to lighten him up on the feet, probably take him down and keep him down if he wants to. But the easiest path is just for Davis to keep it standing, you know, shuck off the takedowns. And um, I don't know how Davis is going to win. I would lean decision, but, you know, knockout wouldn't shock me at all because he's the much, much harder hitter of the two. Um. Yeah. So this fight, yeah, I didn't really, I think, it was, was there a replacement? Is Mike Davis fellow now for somebody? No, yeah, right? he is. Yeah, he is. I forget who it is, but no, I don't think actually he is. No, yeah. So Davis, um, he's a talented guy, man. He came in on the contender series, fought Sadiq Yusuf. That was kind of a war. I think he kind of lost that on their ability, and Yusuf just chopping his calf. Um, but then he moved up to 155, right? I think he had that fight. I don't know. I forget if the Gilbert fight was before or after. Who, who knows? But um, very well-rounded guy, um, you know, in very good condition, right? Strong as an ox, but, like, nimble, right? And Russell has good kicks, uh, strong punches, pretty good boxing, has some jujitsu. So, overall, I just feel that if Mike Davis is paying off and he's the guy, he... Um, he he's gonna be looking good to like hurt Natan Levy with strikes. So I kind of gravitate towards a knockout finish. I don't think that if if Natan if if uh, this guy is uh, if Davis is not putting damage on him, I feel that Natan can compete overall with whether it be in the grappling department with just point fighting and and, and spraying out kicks and stuff like that. Um, so I feel that Mike Davis doesn't have to be on the front foot. And um, I, I think that grappling, I don't know if it's going to be really easy. So I don't know if he's going to kind of stick to that. If there's a lot of resistance, he might just, you know, step back and just box with him. So uh, so I like the knockout. Yeah, you know, one concerning thing is I don't think Mike is good at cutting off the cage. I think he kind of follows you around and, and boxes you as well. Mike Davis long layoff as well. This guy fights like once every 18 months for the past four or five years. So hopefully he can fucking get more active at some point. Um, but yeah, I mean, it should be target practice for Mike on the feed. I mean, his boxing is real sharp. Um, all right, then we're going on to the women's bantamweight division next. Josiah Nunez taking on Chelsea Chandler. Odds for this one have Nunez as the favorite, minus 145. Chandler plus 125. I don't know, man. I didn't put too, a whole lot of thought into this one this week. I kind of think the line is accurate. Um, you know, but Nunez... They're both pretty big hitters for, for women, right? But I think Nunez just has a lot straighter punches. Chandler's punches are kind of looping, and she's she's way less experienced, Chandler. That last fight against Dumont was was ugly. You know, the run the running away moment was ugly. And uh, But I don't know, man. If Chandler makes his instant takedowns here, Nunez's takedown defense and defensive grappling in general is not good. And, uh, you know, Ramona Pasquale had some moments. Zara Farron was boxing her up in the first round, won the first round. So I don't know, man. I, I would never, I, I'm not interested in betting Nunes as a favorite. So I, I guess it's Chandler or pass, uh, but uninteresting fight in, in all realms for me. Um, Yeah, this is a low-key main event of the evening. The uh, the other underdog female fight that we have that we kind of grab, I definitely gravitate towards Chelsea Chandler. Um, I do think that she potentially could get takedowns here. Um, she showed that she was a little bit, I mean, she's shown that she's tough, but um, obviously, the, you, like you said, it's a bad look, kind of running away from your opponent and all these kinds of things. And Josie Ann Nunes is perpetually underrated. The girl, what, this fight's at 135, right? Josie Ann's, yeah. all her other fights are at 145, correct? 
none of her i don't think she's had all right or i think i'm right whatever i think um, so too yeah so i mean she's just always underrated because she looks you know how, how she looks she's so small and kind of you oh, know the Bay, the bay of maleki fight she was 135 135 yeah so i mean that that was another fight that was a hilarious one but i just feel that chelsea she's solid it's gonna be maybe not as easy to get inside on her and get the angles that uh josie is gonna want and josie is probably gonna uh get into put into some kind of grappling scenario where um maybe chelsea could drop some punches on her but honestly i would take chelsea inside the distance because i don't even necessarily think if this fight goes later it's better for her um, I, I think I saw some people feeling that way. I, I kind of don't agree just because if she needs to get takedowns in the third round, like I don't like I'm not feeling confident in that. So I would try to uh, gravitate towards the inside the distance price and uh, and yeah, scoop that up. But, you know, obviously in women's MMA, we see a lot of decisions, but I feel this this fight could be a fight that uh, finishes either way. Yeah, and another interesting point though, Chandler hasn't fought at 135. Actually, she, I'm not, I'm seeing 145 for all of her fights. She made 135 back in 2019, but the Dumont fight was 145. Stolyarenko was catch weight at 140, so she also hasn't made the weight. So, you know, people thinking Chandler maybe takes over on cardio. That's kind of a question mark too, with her not making this weight in a while. So. I don't know. Another uh, another fight where the potential for the women to miss weight. Um, I think the UFC is fi- is like, yeah, you, you fat bitches can't fight at 145 anymore. Like either make 135 or you're out of here. Uh, I think they're officially done with 145, which is which is good. But man, sloppy, sloppy shit there. Uh, justice for B and Malecki, too. Uh, you know, the, the, she, she had concussion. She had a headache and a concussion symptoms for about 18 months straight after the Nunez fight. And that fight lasted one round. So uh, are you saying are you saying justice for her because she didn't deserve that? Uh, I don't know. I just felt bad. <laughs> Again, Martian, I've, I've, I've been telling you, you're a Philly sports fan. There's no right, way right. that you felt bad at any point. Well, B and Malecki was getting her shit kicked in. Stop well, it's funny. I, I, fo- I followed, I followed, B, I followed B. I followed Malecki. Okay, okay. I, yeah, I, I, fo- I followed her like four or five years ago on Instagram. Then I just see her post a couple years ago. Like, the past year has been the darkest year of my life. I've had a headache for eighteen months. My ears are ringing. <laughs> uh, rough, rough game for twelve thousand bucks. Um, hopefully she comes back real soon though. <laughs> uh, flyweight division next men's flyweight Oday Osborne, Jafel Filo odds for this one, a Filo minus minus one fifty three Oday Osborne plus one thirty three. Your turn to start this one off. Um, yeah, this fight here is one where I identified early on that I just felt that Oday Osborne is bait. Don't like him as, as the underdog. Don't like him a lot in, in these fights at 125. His last fight was a 130 catch weight. And I kind of reference these weights. And the biggest reason is just there's like a difference in the power and the stuff like that that you bring into the cage, the pace, um, usually. And uh, I kind of just don't think that uh, Ole is going to be able to stop Fialo from getting in on town. Uh, even Charles Johnson is not a really good uh, grappler kind of got in on his hips kind of whenever he wanted or at least was able to close the distance um oh they took like a six minute break there for a groin strike like that fight was totally irrelevant in my opinion um it's not like it was a good performance anyway um and i just think that fialo is gonna be able to submit him or win a decision i'm not sure i I like the money line now that it's uh, come down minus 150 i'm good with that so that's what i'm gonna do yeah, um, that was his se- second to last fight. The one thirty one against Johnson did get you know destroyed by Amabayev in his most recent fight. But um, he looked better. He looked terrible in that fight too. He didn't look good. Yeah, that one thing I think is worth noting right off the bat is uh, you know Filo won his last fight by submission. Oday lost his last fight by submission, and that the odds now have Filo sub at uh, let's see what it is plus one forty one. You know, on some books, I think that's much far too much equity. You know, they have Philo ITD. It, it's a men's flyweight fight, guys. And they have Philo ITD minus 120. I, I don't see where that much finishing equity comes from in this one. So I think there's got to be value on the overs and the goes to distance here. Maybe even not Philo inside the distance on DraftKings or whatever book you can get it at. And I think the first round, Oday is actually going to do well. I think, you know, the fact that he's 
pretty fast and he's quick with the strikes while fresh. I think he's going to give Philo some trouble, especially we saw, you know, Barish just come out, be aggressive, throw some strikes and it gave Philo some trouble and Philo kind of had to work his way back in. And o- Ode is not going to melt that quickly. Ode does slow down in his fights though. The Vergara fight, he got up to a 2-0 lead, lost the third round. First fight, uh, first round against Charles Johnson, he won and lost the he lost the second and got close in the third. I think he you know squeaked out a split decision there, but I think it's pretty safe to say that his you know high intensity, high, dynamic striking style is pretty prone to slowing down. So I think you're going to get a better price on Philo live here. I think he'll eventually get takedowns, but I don't think it'd be early, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Oday look good and uh, get off to a, an early lead here. But I, I think I'm going to take some of that not Philo ITD. And uh, maybe even play some of the over two and a half here, because uh, I think this one could be like a 29-28 Philo decision after dropping the first round. So not that interesting of a fight uh, to me. The next one, though, is a real, real good one. I think this has potential to be the most exciting fight on the card. Featherweight division, Danny Silva making his UFC debut. Josh Bow coming back on the other side. Minus 180 for Coolibau, Silva plus 155. Silva had an amazing fight in the contender series. I mean, it it was sloppy, but it was competitive. It was high action. Both guys landed 200 strikes in that fight. And the guy just seems like a fun fighter, man. But here's the thing that Pacheco fight. He drops him in the first minute. He's out striking him the entire fight. However, he is staying right in the mix, right in the pocket. So close to Pacheco the entire time. And even though he's better than this guy, he's quicker than this guy. He has better striking. He is just in there getting lit up with strikes the entire time. I mean, he has no distance management. So even though he was better than Pacheco, he still got hit by the guy 200 times. And you know, that just makes me think this guy is going to be constantly in close fights. So I understand why he's the underdog here. But, man, this guy is aggressive. He's high output. He has good offensive dynamic striking. I love his elbows. This guy is throwing elbows on the break from the clinch, which is such an underutilized strike. And I just think this is going to be a striking war, right? I think that, you know, obviously slight possibility either guy ends up with a takedown here i think if anybody's having grappling success it's more likely to be cooley bow but i don't think it's going to be an an initiative of either guy here to be attempting takedowns i think for the most part they're going to stand on the feet trade cooley bow just tends to get in wars on the feet he's got sneaky power and he also kind of struggles against southpaws that time on the feet melsic uh gave him trouble early on um Jordan gave him trouble later on in the fight with the, the southpaw striking. So I just think these guys are going to brawl, man. And so that makes me think that uh, I'm going to be betting the under here or the fight does not go the distance undecided on which one I'm thinking I'm leaning fight ends inside the distance plus plus one thirty. Um, Full disclosure, I never win these fucking bets. And I don't bet the ITDs that much or the unders that much. When I do, I'm usually fucking wrong. And um, I'm going to do it anyway here, though, because I think it's going to be a, a crazy fight where either guy can knock each other out. Uh, money line side, I think, is Danny Silva. And, uh, man, it should be a crazy fight. Um, Yeah, interesting fight here. I mean, Danny Silva, the, the fight that he had in the contender, I mean, he was just, I mean, I, I can't believe he didn't break his hands because he was just clubbing that dude up. Um, He's had a few other interesting fights. Not sure if he's ready for this level overall. Um, Kulabao is a tricky guy, um, you know, very opportunistic, well-rounded. Um, I kind of like maybe him by submission here. But other than that, there's not uh, a play that I've settled on in this one. Um, and it's kind of like, I'm not sure what Kulabao is really going to do, like his whole approach. If it was me, I would try to kind of wow this guy's throwing all these crazy strikes, kind of like look to clinch, get an underhook, take him down, get his back, choke him out. Um, but I don't know if he's going to do that, but he is capable and I like this mission at maybe like seven to one or something, you know, in that neighborhood. Um, one line that's not out yet, but I think will be interesting when it drops is Silva decision only, because I was mentioning this guy has, uh, you know, such a high output. I think if this one hits the decision, he has a really good chance at winning that decision just because he's so high volume. Uh, and he's pl- 320 to win by decision while Cooley Bow is 160. So that makes me think he's going to be the underdog in the decision only market as well. So that's a prop to consider when that one drops. Odds for the next one. Oh, highly anticipated one here. Women's straw weight. Corey McKenna, Jacqueline Amarin. Odds for this one have McKenna minus 180, Amarin plus 155. A boatload, as we say in Philly, of action. 
on Corey McKenna here. I mean, she was minus 130 just about 30 hours ago, yesterday afternoon, all the way down to minus 180. I mean, she was an underdog for, you know, a few weeks there and just a ton of money pouring in on McKenna. Your turn to start this one off. What are you thinking about all this line movement? Um, yeah, I do find it interesting um, just because both these girls are young, um, could show improvements. I think, obviously, there's some tau action on the McKenna side and just a um, a certainty or a uh, confidence that she'll stay safe in terms of their grappling, um, is able to consolidate top position if they do grapple, has a better gas tank, and just overall the better MMA fighter. Um, but... Uh, this girl Amarin, you know, she is tricky on the ground. Like it's a high level, is 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 a little bit different. Um, and I definitely think she could submit Poppins because Poppins is, she's still alpha male dude at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So you don't never know a leg lock. I don't know if you ever saw her LFA fight Amarin where she like knee barred this chick super quick easily. Um, but she she probably slows down here a fair amount. Uh, but I do think that she might be improving, uh, you know, to a, a degree where we're not we don't really have a, a great handle of. Um, so I'm not blaming anybody for being passionate. But for this fight, for me, it's a pass. If I had to stab something, it would probably be I wouldn't want to stab anything. Honestly, I'm not great with the women's uh, props. So I usually like to take us. I, I usually bet on the sides. Um, so it's going to be a pass for me, but I'm definitely intrigued. to watch. I got some stabs here, um, and it would be mechanic late KO. I bet it at uh, 25 to 1, 28 to 1 for round two, round three, uh, because I think it's pretty clear that um, Amarin's style is you know, uh, liable for her to slow down. We saw that very evident in the Sam Hughes fight. Although, you know, I got to give her some credit. I mean, she had those chokes like 95% locked in, and those most women would have tapped to them. And... You know, Sam somehow, something, yeah, somehow Sam Hughes, the cross country runner, just doesn't need oxygen, apparently. And she was able to, you know, weasel her way out of those. Most women would have tapped to them. But in the second and third round, she was totally, totally gassed out. And she had no plan B. She was going for these weak takedowns. She wasn't getting them. She was, you know, going to her guard. She had no drive. She had no physicality what? after that first what? round. Was that fight in the big cage, Martian? That was, right? That was a live crowd. Was that a fight night? I don't, I don't think so. But really? I could be, I could be wrong. Uh, Maybe well, I'm just, um, that just seems like a, an apex type of fight. Uh, let's. Oh no, you're right. Big cage, right? Could, yeah, it was like was, Texas, maybe or something. Uh, Miami, um, Miami, right? So, so that's the only thing that I was like considering, just because I remember like her being on her back and kind of like Sam like maneuvering and moving around a lot. I just feel that with this smaller cage, man. It, it's gonna be dangerous for Poppins with this girl. She, do, you don't want to grapple with her. Don't I? Like I feel like the the grapplers they get better with their jujitsu. Like you see, I, I feel so. That's yeah. the only only thing I wanted to add in. Well, um, she, let's. Uh, I mean, Amarin could be two things. She could be someone like Dern who relies on that jujitsu and never gets better at MMA, or she can be like someone like Adolfo Vieira who builds upon that jujitsu. Um, and so we're going to start to see what we hear. Uh, I think Amarin in round one, though, is you know going to be dangerous and looking better than plus 155, man. I mean, I think if any girl ends up on top in round one, I think uh, Amarin is slightly more likely to be there. And I think she's going to be much more uh, dangerous if she's able to get on top here. So dude, she's going to go for some leg locks, dude. So I hope this girl's been working on some leg lock defense. Yeah, I mean, Amarin is no doubt the better jujitsu grappler of the two. But uh, so early on, man, I, I think McKenna, especially at this price now, is, is no good. I think that if you were able to get in at, you know, plus money pick him, even, you know, minus 130 or something on McKenna, that was probably good because the longer the fight goes, she's much more experienced late in fights, like significantly more experienced late in fights. Amarin has only gone out around one, two times. One on one of those fights, she finished uh, Ruiz the bum in the third round and then totally gassed out versus Hughes. So her cardio is really uh, much more variable. McKenna has been later in fights much more often, been to the de decision six times. So just that late fight experience is enough to, for me to lean with McKenna here. But I think she's going to be in danger round one. 
Uh, I think the cardio advantage is clear with her. And that's why I took that round two, round three stabs, because I think she might be pretty hard to submit, obviously coming from a jujitsu background. So if McKenna is able to leverage her cardio, if Amarin slows down, McKenna's getting on top. I think she's going to be trying to go for more ground and pound instead of getting submission. So I'm on that late. So uh, late, late KO two, three for McKenna. That's going to take us to the second fight on the card. A, a Short notice replacement fight in the lightweight division. Tiago Moises, Mitch Ramirez. Moises, big favorite here, minus 370. Mitch Ramirez, plus 295. Ramirez got knocked out by Carlos Prates on the contender series at welterweight. Took a lightweight fight in the LFA, won it by KO in the first round. And now is getting a short notice fight versus Moises here. I mean, Moises, a wealth more experience at the high level. I mean, not even close uh, to the level of experience for Moises here. And he's the, the much better grappler. He at times in fights hasn't been the most um, efficient, uh, but he also has handled some lower level opponents with ease lately, like Yagos, like uh, Mel Costa. Um, but then he also boofed that fight against Joel Alvarez, who he's much better than, and he should have won that fight. So uh, I think that, Moises should be capable of, of, you know, using his experience in grappling here to find a late submission. I think the submission at any plus money is is probably the side here, or probably the only bet I can see to be on here. Maybe wait for sub two three if you're waiting for that. But I'll go sub two for Moises here. Uh, I got Moises inside the distance. Under. At, at what price? Doesn't matter. No, and, and no, that's not true. Under was playable early, but I'm sure it's gotten bet. Uh, it's still minus one thirty five for under two and a half. Doesn't start around three. That'll be um. Well, that hasn't dropped yet. Moises no. uh, inside the distance, so you could get like minus one forty, one thirty five. He's gonna finish. This fight will finish, but I, I would take doesn't uh, doesn't start around three. I like that. Do you think he has? You think he has a chance to KO Moises? Moises I just I, I just feel maybe some ground and pound. Who knows, dude? You know, sometimes Mo- maybe Moises wants to become the alpha, you know? Mm. He had a knockout on the contenders back in the day. Knocked out he got, Jamal he's got Emmert. Some good kick. He's got Knock- some head kicks. He's yeah, I remember that. Kicks. Yeah. I remember. Um, hasn't shown it in a while, though. Uh, and, you know, Ramirez probably cutting a lot of weight. I mean, he, he's he cutting was just, a lot of weight. That's the other he thing. Was, yeah. He was at 170 for a while. Now he's taking a short notice fight at 155 here. So he's probably cutting a lot of weight. Um, so yeah, I I think that that's not a not a Ramirez bad is a jobber, bro. This guys, this is a jobber. He's a, he's he still is. getting brought in just to lose. I mean, Tiago Moises, he's part of the ATT. Can, he's in the inner circle, you know. Right, Dustin you Poirier giving dream. him good, giving him good vibes. Mateus Absolutely. Gamera giving him good he, vibes. He 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 shouted Tiago out uh, specifically when he said that BSD fought one of his friends and beat him. That was Tiago. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. he didn't mention him by name, but I did. I did catch that. Yes, um, you did. You're a smart guy. Last fight on the card for us. First fight on the card for everybody. It'll be kicking off at 4 p.m. on ESPN Plus. You gonna be watching these fights live, Ozzy? You gonna be touching grass on Saturday, oh, sir? I gotta touch grass barbecue. We got like you know with, with some with some friends out on Long Island, so you know maybe oh, I'll yeah. catch a few fights at some point, but uh, not the, maybe not the, the Equinorians, right? Not that uh, uh I, I don't think they'll be there. No, they were they were sad though. They were sad last week. Yeah. Sure. You, um. So it's uh Chad from Canada. You know, just a a horrible mix of things right there. I know. I know a, g- a gay Chad from Canada too. Um, taking on uh uh Ch- Charlemos Charlempos Gregorio. However the fuck you say that. We're gonna um, go with Gregorio. Yep. And the odds for this one, Gregorio minus one seventy. Chad. Plus one forty five, and I believe it's my turn to start this one off. So, um, they're both kind of similar fighters, orthodox strikers mostly. Uh, both like mixing in leg kicks. Gregorio really mixes in the leg kick pretty well, and I just think Gregorio is uh going to be the side for me here. I bet him minus one fifty eight, and I just think that he's you know I I know he's younger, he's much less shop worn, much less miles on him, and I think he's going to be a little bit sharper here on the feet and. Even if they tangle up and uh, mix, go on the ground at some point, um, I could see either guy having success. Chad had brief moments of wrestling success versus uh, Jose Bobby Johnson in his last fight, but uh, yeah. I think it'll be short lived. And eventually, Gregorio will probably you know hustle his way through a decision here by being uh, the younger, more uh, tenacious 
damaging fighter of the two. I mean, his I think his striking is just overall sharper than Chad's. Uh, I mean, Chad has had, you know, Chad had close moments with Jesse Strader on the feet. I mean, uh, you, you remember what you said that you thought Chad, Chad was a better striker than Jose. We 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 curved. We that was a curve. Uh, I ended up betting Johnson submission in that fight. That one with 11 seconds to go. So whatever I said on the podcast is irrelevant because we made real dollars on that one. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so we're on to this fight. This is likely Chad's last fight coming in or leaving the UFC. Perfect. Um, you know, Gregorio Gregorio is not an amazing prospect, but he's from New York. He trains at Law MMA or Sarah Longo. Oh. I don't I don't know the, the distinctions that they do. Um has done jujitsu, ran in the ninth circles around here, the the right ones. Um and 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 hard worker comes in shape. Um, I think he makes 135 kind of easy. It's not hard, but I mean, it's not easy, but it's not hard. And uh, more, mostly a striker, but the guys, you know, he could wrestle a little bit. You know, he could go to the ground. I see. I don't think he's going to blow Chad out just because Chad, he'll move around. He's got a decent chin and stuff like that. So actually, I actually like this fight to go the distance. I do think that Chad could maybe get dropped or maybe like they come out at a crazy pace and it could fuck me over. But I think that it's gonna go all three rounds, and I kind of like Gregorio by decision as well. I I really I really don't want to lay the money line price. I I think it, I'm better off. Like I feel more comfortable with the GTD and taking a plus money on his uh on his decision line, and just hoping that Chad you know is gonna use you know kicks you know skirt around jab a little bit, and Gregorio is not gonna be able to land a, a really big clean shot. But what do you think about that? Would you favor it to go the distance, put a little bit of plus money on that, plus 120? I would. I would. 25? Yeah, I like that one. You know, I, I, I don't think it's a huge edge, but I, I do think that it goes the distance here uh, at 135. Chad, Chad's never been knocked out. He's been submitted. Exactly. Six, he's been submitted six times somehow. And, and uh, I will say, I said it in the last fight as well. I said, Chad said that he's worked on his grappling, like, and, you know, all those kinds of things. But I did say that I liked jose to finish the fight and i think both of them came true right like if you bet the over you would have won and then the the submission but it still took a long time for a guy with a lot of attribute advantage in jose and like a, a guy that goes for a lot of submissions to actually finish chad so chad's tough i like the goes this chad's just clearly this is his do or die moment i mean he's 37 this is his fourth fight in the ufc if he does not win this he is out and uh He's looked pretty flat in his past two fights. Even the, the one win in the UFC he had straighter, I think, was a pretty weak performance. Um, I actually, oh, I can remember my, my uh, of course you remember this, Ozzy. Uh, but my infamous list of the worst fighters of the past few years, I really debated putting Chad on there. But I decided he, he didn't make the cut. And then he actually replied to the tweet. And he said, oh, I, I guess who, I know who I'm going to be looking for my next opponent. And I said, Ch I replied. I said, Chad, I'm going to be honest. I almost <laughs> put you on the list. But uh, I, how I did you not it. put on the list? You, you had 200 people on that list. How did you? No, not no, it was only like 120. Like I said, he was close, and this is before the Johnson lost. I mean, it was it was close. That's that's yeah. That's why you picked him because you thought that he wasn't on that. You put Jose Johnson on that list. I'm sure. You dumb motherfucker. No, fuck no. Fuck no. Um, okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and then also uh, Gregorio, a lot of a uh, lot of Northeast ties, a lot of CFFC experience. He actually grappled a guy who I grappled against. This guy Christian really? Bobby. Christian Bobby, he was a uh, he's like an uh, amateur MMA fighter. But uh, oh, I, I did like this. I did this tournament right, and mm -hmm. I went against this guy, and he dude he did, he destroyed me. And then after I was <laughs> I was trying to talk to him after the match, he didn't he didn't want to talk at all. But like, I was like oh so man, and, and then I was like how long are you do jujitsu? He's like oh four months. And I was like dude I've been doing it like fourteen months, and this guy just fucking destroyed me i was like nice. man I'm, i might not have what it takes <laughs> what do you submit you with? what do you submit you with? uh, uh we, i think we did no gi and gi and then uh gi was an arm bar and i don't actually remember what it was no gi uh, Sick. but but he definitely submitted you twice yeah yeah i think like an, a rear naked probably for, nice, for no nice. gi. yeah though 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 those those uh those uh divisions are you know uh Fucking minefield, real scrap. Yeah, he, he wrestled in he wrestled in high school. Yeah, you um, know, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah, you know that yeah. that those sometimes in, in in Pennsylvania and Jersey, 
the 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 novice or the beginner division sometimes they're the hardest divisions dude <laughs> oh dude yeah northeast is no joke. all these all these especially at your weight class all these little short dudes they want their gold medal dude you know where the where the fuck is chad from in canada i wonder uh who knows dude alberta that, i don't think that's anywhere near the northeast so no um all right we'll do it we'll do a little fmk close this bitch out let's um, go let's go okay so um Okay, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you some. Okay, please. So we're gonna go some goes the distances here, right? We're gonna start things off with the one we just talked about, the Ann Heiliger, uh Gregorio GTD plus one twenty five. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we're gonna throw in the most recent women's fight we were talking about, Amarin McKenna GTD minus one sixty, and then mm. um, last but not least, we'll do the O'Day. Uh, um, yeah, we'll do the O'Day Osborne Philo goes a distance plus two hundred. Oof. Okay, FMK. Those I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck the that one that you just said that that goes a distance there. Just that plus two hundred, better bang for your buck. I'm gonna marry uh the Ann Halliger uh over as one or goes a distance, one of my favorite ones. And then I'm killing that that Poppins on Marin. That 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 fight could finish. 12 ways to Sunday, so definitely count me out on that one, on that going the distance, okay? So coming back at you, Martian. All right, number one, we got Martian Tybora. At, you pick them, you know, minus 102, 103, whatever your heart desires. I'm giving you um, uh, Mike Davis to win inside the distance at plus 145. And last one, let's go with what's another? Uh, Danny Silva. Plus, uh, or the under in the Danny Silva fight. Mm. Plus, what was that? What was that? It was like plus, plus like one four fifty five. Yeah, same same price as money lines. I like these. I like these. Um, okay. FMK. FMK. So I'm gonna have to fuck the big man, Marching Tabura. He's looking good with that new haircut. I don't know if y'all have seen that yet, but he's looking good. <laughs> that was a funny one. And then that'll leave us to kill Mike Davis. Itd. I have some questions about his finishing ability. Uh. A la the Thomas Gifford fight back in the day, and then um, I'm, I'm I'm marrying the Silva under man. It, it's a high tempo fight. It's a high tempo fight. There will be a lot of significant strikes. There might even be some knockdowns. Will there so be I blood? Be, um, yeah, the uh, the elbows, bro. The uh, and Cooley Bow's nose is always bleeding too. Uh, but I think the elbows of of Stanny Silva are going to be uh, causing some blood. Nice call. All right, that'll do it. So we're in the midst of a a, a a crazy stretch of USC events right now. I think we still got like four in a row after this. You got any uh, mentions you want to do? Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm partnering, uh, some people know, with uh, John Kelly, Pepe, a few other people on uh, fight numbers. Um, who, are, who are the other people? Uh, just some other people on the back end. Uh, or Evan, excuse me, excuse me, there Evan you and, you uh, and, and, yeah, but there's like, there's like someone else as well in the back end, but, um, excuse me. Um, what was I saying? Uh, so yeah, switching up the content, potentially doing some written articles, betting stuff. Um, we have some betting tools that we're going to be, uh, you know, that John's been working on for a while. Um, and, and these other, this other person as well. And, uh, so yeah, potentially doing a, a different or a new podcast, potentially, hopefully maybe Martian will be a part of it later on as well. Um, but still TBD on a, on a, a few of those things. All right. But well, it'd be good. You... Be good. It's, it's going to be a very profitable year um, overall. And I think there's a lot of good things that we're bonding and creating together that uh, people will like, and uh, it will, it will work out for them. Sounds good. You got us on our edges, on the edges of our seats with this. Uh, something is on the horizon. So make sure you're tuning in in the following weeks to see, uh, what direction Ozzy's going in, but yeah, just keep plugging away with these fights. We got another kind of weak couple of fight nights in a row coming up soon, then the big UFC 300 card. So, uh, hope everyone enjoys the fights, has a nice weekend, win some money, and we'll see you all next week. Peace out, everyone.